Today we're installing Windows the Arch Linux way, which means command line interface only, mostly command prompt, and behind me is what you're gonna start with. Everyone's installed Windows a bunch, and if we look at this, well, it's just the standard install of Windows. We're just gonna go ahead and not use any next buttons. We're not gonna do anything. Let's pretend like Windows forces something really bad in their installer like TPM or uh, let's say you're, you're, you don't meet the requirements to install this new version of Windows and you really want to. Well, this way is a true fire way to go around it. And we're gonna install the most restrictive version of Windows, Windows 11 Home, which I hate. I always install Pro on every single install video I do. Not today, we're gonna use Home. So where do we begin? We gotta think through all the things this wizard does. It does partitioning. It installs the base Windows system and it creates um, a boot files. So that's pretty much all we do from command prompt. We don't necessarily need the wizard. Now you might be thinking, why do any of this? Well, exactly, to get around any limitations we get. Like when we get to the out of box experience, otherwise known as OOBE, we can bypass stuff there too. If Microsoft throws roadblocks, as long as you know the command line interface. As a Linux guy and a Windows guy, knowing PowerShell command prompt in Windows is paramount to a lot of my success in life in my career so it's important to know these things let's get into it so we're going to start with just a shift f10 so if you have never used that shift f10 typically gets you a command prompt in windows installation media out of box experience let's say you get locked out of your system a lot of times shift f10 will get you something like this which we can do pretty much anything with so the first thing we need to do is partition our drives because that would be the first thing we get to. So let's do that first with just disk part. We'll list disk. We only have one disk. We'll select that disk. So with that selected, we can actually start to create partitions. Now, I always recommend doing like a list par to see if there's any partitions on the disk, deleting those. If you do delete those, just know it will delete all the data on that disk. So make sure you have the right disk and you're deleting the right partitions if you do that. So we're gonna need two partitions, one for boot files and then one for all of the rest of Windows and any other files we have, a data partition, if you will. So we'll do create par or partition. You can actually spell it out, doesn't matter. You'll do shorthand. We'll do an EFI size equals 100. Uh, you can do more than that, but 100 is more than enough for that. Now, if you do get this, it means that the actual disk is not GPT, but with that other disk selected, we can easily go convert GPT. And if we do a list disk again, you can see now that uh, GPT has that little asterisk saying it's GPT. So now we can go creating that EFI partition. So we've created our first partition, it's a GPT disk, and now we just need to create where all of our files will go. And we're just gonna go primary, and actually, we don't even need to include this size, I believe, but we just do create partition primary. It'll create the rest of all the partition. Just to make sure we did that right, do list par. You can see we do have two partitions. One's an EFI partition where our boot files go and a second partition that is the rest of the drive. Uh, so just doing create par uh, partition primary did that. So we'll select par one, and then we're just gonna go format FS for file system. FAT32, and then quick. And don't forget the quick option, otherwise it's gonna take a century. Uh, all right, and then we select PAR2. This is the primary data partition where all the files go usually. So we're gonna format this with file system NTFS, and we'll do quick for it. Now we also need to assign letters, and we'll just assign the partition two to letter C and select par one and we'll assign this letter to equal G. So if we go list vol, you can see all the volumes currently associated with this. Our main primary partition where windows will go is in C, G's our boot partition, which is assigned to letter G. Really important to remember those letters. So we can exit out of this with uh, all of everything assigned, formatted and partitioned. Now we're already in uh, X right here, X sources. This is the actual install media from our ISO. 
Uh, now we need to verify what version of Windows we're going to install. You know how usually in the wizard it says you're going to install Pro or Home or In or Europe or whatever, whatever you got. Uh, it'll show that in our installation media, but we need to get that information. So we'll do it with this DISM command and hit enter. Uh, could not find this file. Uh, it might actually not be on this one. Let's look at the D drive, I believe. Let's go to sources here. Let's try to run that command one more time. Yes, that one actually had the files. Uh, the X one was just the live media. The D drive was actually the ISO. So you can see all the different versions. Index one is just standard Windows 11 home. Index two is home in and so on and so forth. So you can pick whichever one you want. I typically would go with uh, Windows 11 Pro. It's my tried and true one that I do on almost all my installs. You get group policy and a whole bunch of other good stuff. And it's really easy to bypass the intro installer by just doing a domain join. However, we're not doing any of that today. We're going to pretend like we are a noob and we got Windows 11 home on here. So we're going to do index one instead. But remember those index numbers, because now we need to apply that to the C drive and copy all the Windows files. So we're going to go DISM apply image image file install.wim index colon one for windows 11 home if we did index six it would be windows 11 pro now this is the official iso so those indexes should match up with what you're using but i still recommend doing that get index for whatever iso you're, you got it loaded and then we need to see where are we applying this to so we're going to go apply directory and usually i'm just going to go c colon uh, remember colon c colon for the apply directory we'll hit enter and this should take a while because this is actually copying all the windows files now over into the c drive getting that prepared now this is a relatively fast system even with it being virtualized so I would imagine this takes one to two minutes to apply this image. If you're using a custom image, like an NT light image that I've shown in the past that's stripped down, this could take 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, on official stock ISO, you can see it takes about two to three minutes. So it's actually a little bit faster. If you're really good at uh, typing, you could actually m beat out the official installer. All right, and that's finished. That took roughly about 90 seconds, I'd say. And now we just need to copy our boot files over to that EFI. So we'll go boot, BCD boot. We're going to select C Windows as this now is populated with the above command. The boot files are actually in every Windows install. So if you even delete it on your install at Windows, just know you can actually copy that with just live media. You don't need to actually do a startup repair or any of that nonsense that usually doesn't work anyways. And we're just going to select uh, the G drive, which is that. 100 meg EFI partition, and we'll just do F all. Now you could do a, a different option instead of all. All actually copies old legacy MBR and GPT drives, but typically I always do an F all and it just creates all those files for you. And we're done. We've installed Windows all through the CLI, more of the Arch Linux way, but let's see what the new user, the out of box experience is on reboot. So we'll just exit this and reboot. All right, and then we get our out of box experience as if it was a new computer. Now, typically when you go yes on a Windows 11 home install, you usually wants a Microsoft account by stock defaults. You always know when it says good things are coming your way, you should probably worry during an install process. I'm gonna let this continue. And then once it gets to a spot where I think you can't get any further, we're gonna use the command line to get past it. And this is where you have run into a roadblock. It says unlock your Microsoft experience. It wants you to sign in with a Microsoft account. Now, what we can do is go shift F10. Oh, there's that, that great command prompt that allows us to do anything we want to the computer. We're going to just type in a simple command. It's going to be OOBE backslash bypass NRO. We'll hit enter. It's going to reboot again. Now, typically you'd want to unplug your ethernet just to make sure Microsoft doesn't any shenanigans, uh, but we'll go ahead and let it reboot and pull back up. Now we have this now to just make sure it doesn't do that. What I would typically do is pull out that shift F10 again, and then I'm just going to go IP config release and that makes sure we don't have any internet connection during this process as we don't want Microsoft 
trying to do some kind of update when we're trying to bypass this new user experience. So I'm just going to say I don't have internet. We didn't do that OOBE backslash bypass NRO. It would only give you connect internet options here. But I'm going to say I don't have internet. And then we're going to continue with limited setup. We'll say our username is subscribe. And for password, always enter nothing in here for a local account during setup because then you bypass all the security questions, which is nice. Now you could tick all these off if you want, but technically I usually just run my out of box experience anyways that does the exact same thing as it disables all that stuff. All right, and now that we're on the desktop, you can see we have all the stock settings here. Nothing has really changed from a basic install. We're using Windows 11 Home, and uh, we are ready with this local account to kind of start setting up and massaging things. The thing I would do here is just come into terminal with admin, do an IRM christitus.com forward slash win pipe IEX. This runs my script and we're just going to do a basic tweak here to kind of make things a little bit faster. So if we look at our base settings out of the stock, it's about 148. This should clean up a lot of that. We're just going to go tweaks, standard desktop, and we'll put dark theme on, add ultimate performance, and we're just going to run those basic tweaks. If we wanted to remove Microsoft Edge, we could. Uh, the only thing I recommend people don't do is don't remove all MS Store apps as that's probably gonna break some stuff for you, especially if you need the Microsoft Store at any time. And then usually I just go security update so it's not constantly updating and messing with you. With those tweaks out of the way, we'll give it another reboot, just see how we're doing. Uh, we could clean up the start menu, remove some of those apps, but for the most part, we should have a really good base system setup the Arch Linux way using almost all through the command line. And here we go. Ah, already looking a lot better. I would still kind of clean this up, probably get rid of widgets over here. Ah, you know, just the basic stuff. Let's see what our processes look like. Uh, we're down to about 81, 82 processes, two gigs of memory using pretty much all stock. So this is the way I like to set up my windows. Obviously there's still a lot more massaging I would do, but right here you'd have such a better base than almost everyone else that starts with a stock windows install. With that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Was this useful to you? Did you know you could install everything through the command line? I really need to get into PowerShell because that stuff will blow your mind. And if you'd like to support me, go check out cttstore.com. I have, uh, obviously you could buy an offline version of this toolbox, uh, but really that's just for helping keep funding the development of it, making it better. I wanna thank all the fans over the years that have helped and contributed back, whether that's from a purchase or just contributing code. So thank you guys so much. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.